Welcome to ETK Suit Series. We have with us uh, Karina Gopal, and uh, she is the CEO of uh, Foundation for Future Cities. And apart from this, she wears a lot of hats, and one of them happens to be she is the most sought after speaker on smart cities in conventions, just not in India, but the uh, rest of the world. And uh, at the moment, she is designing a course for some of, one of the finest institutions in the country, that is ISB. And uh, she has been lecturing across the globe, including Washington. And uh, she has been featured uh, again across the globe, in uh, uh, both in print and uh, uh, video media. And uh, she is here with us today to share her ideas on what is called is how do we develop smart cities so that we can have uh, really sustainable cities in the country and uh, she comes with again uh, with a lot of uh, experience especially research friend as well as having done consulting uh, uh, work so she's here with us to share her ideas on how to build smart indian cities welcome to ET cases karna thank you very much for having so, me here thank you so much and uh, let's start with your journey into this uh, very uh, what do you say, white space, I would say blue ocean kind of thing in this uh, space. What motivated you to get into this one? Well, um, it happened by accident. Um, I think in the year 2001, I was invited to lecture at Administrative Staff College of India, where there was a bunch of uh, uh, practicing municipal commissioners who were attending a program on uh, good urban governance. So they were very senior um, IAS officers, commissioners of cities. And, and uh, by the way, I think before I am sorry to interrupt, she comes from the very illustrious uh, civil servants family. All her family members are all uh, civil servants. Please go ahead, ma'am. So, um, then when I was invited to speak at the uh, training program, uh, I was given a topic called uh, transition management in e governance implementation. And it just, it was perhaps uh, one of my first sessions with the practicing uh, municipal commissioners, and uh, they just liked what I had to say. I mean, I gave a very clean picture on how transition has to be managed when you're implementing technology solutions. What would be the, uh, let's say, the protocol that they have to follow. And after that, uh, I think uh, they, they just liked it. Mm -hmm. And immediately in a week, I was invited by the uh, city of Bangalore. The municipal commissioner of Bangalore invited me. And um, he just pulled in all his... Uh, uh, people like additional commissioners and entire staff and just put them under one roof and wanted me to explain about uh, um, how does the city uh, arrive at a vision. So right. I was invited for that and after that several cities invited me. We did uh, a lot of high value work. Mm -hmm. So that was the accident. The, so, but, how, but after that, I think you have started this beautiful uh, initiative called as for the Foundation for Future Cities, yes. on behalf of which you have done fantastic work, including uh, I think you have worked with the JN and URM. So, yes. can you take us through what's your experience with working with the government industry? Because most of the times, in India, with all due respects, the private institutions or private bodies like you, they get frustrated working with the governments. So they, therefore, even the great dream gets uh, frustrated at some point, uh, and most of the projects do not see the logical end. So what is your experience having worked with the uh, government of India, especially with Jane and URM? Well, uh, my experience has been both good and bad. Right. Um, let me just uh, explain why I'm saying mm. that. I say it has been good because at least we had an opportunity to see how the government works, the complexities of governance, the multiple layers of um, complexity that you see, the different stakeholders. Right. Uh, for instance, if you have to typically see um, how a city gets managed, there's anywhere between uh, 28 to 36 agencies that have to collaborate and come together and give some basic services. So it's an extremely complex thing. So I say that I liked working because we, we understood the complexity, we understood the challenges, we understood the enormity of work that is there to give better services to the citizens. Apart from that, I've also seen it's not only in India, but in other parts of the world, they do have similar complexity and similar challenges. Right. Like for instance, in, um, in the US, I had seen that um, California has been going through a lot of uh, challenges in terms of getting their own uh, elected representatives to come share um, you know, share in a forum uh, certain, let's say, uh, goal alignment itself was Visioning difficult kind of for thing. them. Yeah. It was difficult and they uh, admitted as much. 
and it's not only in the United States, but I've seen in some of the European states. I think uh, there have been um, issues. Mm -hmm. So India that way is no different from others. So that has been good. Well, the difficult part is I lost some of my very good consultants <laughs> when I transitioned from uh, right. working with the um, right. you know government. Uh, private sector mm, to the to government. government. And I really lost very good people, uh, people who had PhDs and uh, from IITs and they were working with me, but they couldn't really work with the government agencies because collecting data was difficult, uh, convincing them about the outcomes was difficult, taking them through the process of... Uh, um, also ownership, if I'm right. Exactly, ownership. Yeah. Everything was difficult. So yeah. my, my people, you know, right. left me. Right. It was very, very difficult for me at that time. But I managed with a handful and now trained a whole lot of others. So any lessons that you've learned from this <laughs> experience? Yeah. I learned quite a bit actually. But uh, the more I work in, in this challenging area, in this extremely complex area, the more I'm excited to work. Because so, I have picked up certain uh, skills that I don't think very many people will have now. Right. And, and it's only by virtue of having really spent our time, soiled our hands, and right. uh, slept over issues and back one day you get up and then you know really what might work. And the very fact that you come from a very illustrious civil servants family, does it work in your advantage? Especially when you're working with governments and you know, trying to do it. Most of them are civil servants. So <laughs> does it really work for your advantage? Well, again, yes and no. <laughs> it works in the sense that uh, I understand the culture of uh, the government. I understand the culture of the government. I understand the hierarchy. I understand uh, how they delegate work and how uh, short terminism exists and why it does because leadership change is a right. pretty a common thing there. Then, um, but the disadvantage has been that um, several bureaucrats resist when they know that you are from a bureaucrat's family. Right. Um, they wouldn't like to see their fraternity and you know too much penetrating into that as advisors etc. So there are I, I knew the system, but I also faced a little bit of resistance. Right.